This updated version of Audi's second generation Q5 gets a smarter look, an extra sleeker sport back body shape, an upgraded cabin and more efficient diesel power to join the existing petrol and petrol plug-in options. There's a big step forward in media connectivity too. As ever, this mid-sized premium Audi executive SUV offers car-like driving dynamics that are great on tarmac and fine for very light off-road use. Plus, there's loads of advanced technology and a beautifully practical interior crafted in Audi's own inimitable style. In short, if you can afford it, you'd like one. So, what is a Q5 like on the move? Well, there is, after all, plenty that's different here, even if you choose this conventional SUV body shape rather than the coupe-like Q5 Sportback variant, which Audi now offers as an alternative. That model has to have firmer sports suspension, but even with this setup fitted, ride quality remains one of this car's most attractive features. Uh, it combines with exemplary refinement to make this Audi a consummate suburban and highway conveyance. It's less appealing if your priority lies with raising rather than lowering your heartbeat. Uh, blame the rather lifeless steering for that. And that's something that Audi should improve in future by working with its partner VW Group brand Porsche, who in the past have borrowed quite a few Q5 mechanicals for their rival Macan model. That not as many of the oily bits are shared between the two cars now is down to the fact that this updated version of the Mark II Type 80 AQ5 gets an extra dose of electrification beneath the bonnet, where, unlike the Macan, this Audi can still provide the option of diesel power, a drive format that remains defiantly favoured by customers in the upper mid-sized premium segment. Uh, most will opt for it in the 40 TDI form we're trying here, in which form you get an all-new 2-litre TDI unit, which gets a power hike to 204 PS and features twin dosing tech for greater cleanliness, which is also aided by the adoption of a 12-volt mild hybrid system. This has kept the efficiency figures competitive. Uh, this base sports spec SUV model returns up to 44.8 mpg on the combined cycle and up to 165 grams per kilometer of CO2. The alternative mainstream 2-litre four-cylinder variant are the petrol-powered 45 TFSI with 265 PS, which features the same seven-speed S-Tronic Auto gearbox, also uses a 12-volt MHEV system, but a more sophisticated 48-volt mild hybrid setup features with the V6 TDI diesel engine sporting SQ5 model, a variant now offering 341 PS. A much greater degree of electrification is of course delivered by the two plug-in hybrid Q5 derivatives, uh, the 50 TFSIE with 299 PS and the 55 TFSIE with 367 PS, both of which can run on battery power for up to 26 miles after around two hours of replenishment from a 7 kilowatt charger. These PHEVs are based around Audi's 2-litre petrol turbo engine mated to a 105 kilowatt electric motor and powered by a 14.1 kilowatt hour battery. And they use the same tarmac orientated Quattro Ultra predictive on-demand four-wheel drive system as the other mainstream models. Unless you happen to be a brand enthusiast or an Audi salesperson, uh, you might struggle to spot the updated visual cues that set this version of this Mark II Type 80A series Q5 model apart from the original version of this second generation design that we first saw in 2017. Well, you might struggle to tell the differences in this standard SUV form anyway. Freshly added to the range is an alternative sport back version with a more coupe-like silhouette and quite a lot more pavement presence. It's the standard variant though, which is our focus today, and it remains a lean, sophisticated looking crossover, an SUV with a sense of purpose. Particularly in this revised form, which gets a series of uh, specific visual hallmarks intended to move it more closely into step with other more recently introduced SUVs in the Audi portfolio. Uh, to that end, this octagonal single frame front grille has become shallower and it now appears a little wider than before. Uh, with this base sport spec model, it features these vertical silver struts, uh, pricier variants replaced like, with a black honeycomb mesh. 
And in profile, well, the larger bumpers of this revised model have added an extra 19 millimetres to the 4.8 metre body length. But an owner of an earlier version of this Mark II model is probably more likely to notice the slightly more streamlined look delivered by this redesigned lower sill insert. At the back, updates include this extra diffuser insert finished in either selenite silver, uh, matte brushed aluminium or titanium black, depending on model. And you now also get this chrome strip which runs between the wedge-shaped light clusters. So the exterior changes are restrained. Will the cabin updates applied to this revised model be equally subtle? Let's take a look up front. Uh, getting into the front seat is predictably easy thanks to the raised right height you get in this kind of SUV. And this door clunks shut with vault-like quality, leaving you a cabin that uh, remains a masterclass in interior quality and ergonomics. Now, despite recent advances made by direct rivals in many ways, this remains the defining interior of its class with a cool, classy feel that's distinctive to this Ingolstadt brand. The key change here is the addition of this now much larger 10.1 inch centre dash infotainment screen with its more sophisticated graphics, acoustic touch functionality and natural language voice control. Unfortunately, you don't get the useful rotary controller that operated the previous MMI system, uh, but navigation is now standard as are a wider range of cutting edge Audi Connect media features. Plus, unlike Mercedes, Audi won't make you pay more for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring. You're positioned almost faultlessly on supportive heated leather seats in front of the best digital dash in the segment, the 12.3 inch Audi virtual cockpit screen, now fitted as standard throughout the range. Uh, wherever you look, feel or touch, there are treats, Buttons click nicely, the column stalks feel good, and the low rent plastics that you'd find further down in most premium rivals are noticeable by their absence. Now it's time to turn our attention to the rear, which predictably is slightly easier to access with this standard SUV model than it is with the alternative Q5 sport back body style. Unfortunately, the UK doesn't get the long wheelbase version of this model that Audi does offer to customers in its Asian markets, but that won't matter too much, provided you can get a version of this car fitted with the sliding uh, rear bench seat plus back seat. Uh, this lets you slide the base back and forth by 12 centimetres to increase either legroom or luggage space, and also alter the backrest angle through three stages for greater long distance comfort. With this bench in its normal position, the space on offer back here isn't too much different from what you get with a competitor like that. Two adults should be pretty comfortable with plenty of room for elbows and legs. And there are no real issues with headroom either, uh, even in the sportback version with its noticeably sloped roof line. Let's take a look at the boot and that's accessed via a standard powered tailgate. Uh, the rising height of this can be tailored to suit your garage ceiling. A 520 litre space is on offer with this SUV body style, 10 litres more than you'll get with the Sportback version. Uh, completely flattening the rear bench, that frees up to 1480 litres of space in the Sportback version of this car, or 1520 litres in this standard SUV model. In summary then, whether your destination is Sainsbury's or the annual family skiing trip to Chamonix, it's likely that you'll feel better about doing it in an Audi Q5. Although some rivals might drive better or make more of a golf club statement, it's ultimately hard to escape the conclusion that a Q5 simply does a better job of the whole business of ticking every really important need that you want to meet when buying a premium upper mid-sized SUV. It isn't a car for extremes, but if you're looking for a contender in this segment, it's extremely difficult to ignore. Resolutely high-tech and resolutely real-world, the Q5 remains resolutely right.